And if you, Brian, hold these flat. Yep. You're doing good, Noah. We're gonna let it just flow right around the corner. Don't you like it when it chugs? I hate this. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so if you're on this side, Beth, then you can see those nails. We're, we're right there. It's just a matter of smoothing it out. That looks good. Yeah, giddy up. This foundation is ready for inspection, with the exception of my hold down straps. So what I like to do is once everything is strung nice and straight, our grade is shot. That's this orange line with our little three penny grade nails. That's top of concrete. Once everything is nice and straight and it's braced and it's locked in, that's when I install my hardware. In this case, it's the Strong Tie STHD14. It's a hold down strap. So a portion of the strap is embedded in the concrete and then this portion of the strap is nailed to our column, which can either be a double two by, the nails are offset to reduce um, splitting, or more likely in my case, it's gonna be a four by six or even a six by six. There's a few things though, a very simple strap to install, but there are a few things that we want to get right. First of all, that's our pour line. Top of concrete is this joint. That means that this rolled steel edge, that needs to be embedded in the concrete. We don't want it to be too low and we don't want it to be too high. Notice how the strap is angled. This whole strap is designed to reduce spalling. When we strip this and we bend the strap one time, we don't want any of the concrete to break out back here. So how do we install these to minimize all of that? Well, I'm really glad that you asked. We bought a box of these strap mates, man, I don't know, 10 or 15 years ago, same box. Really, it's two pieces, it's just a wedge. So what I'm going to do is use two six penny duplex nails it's got little hooks here. That's the edge of your form. And I'm just gonna tack this in place. Now I've already located this and I know that the strap's going to fit without any rebar being in the way. That's one thing to keep in mind with the rebar placement. Okay, here's the second one. Now there's a minimum edge distance from the corners. I'm well over that. It's a half inch minimum. I had to slide this way just a little bit because of my rebar and this one I'm about an inch and that's typically what I aim for. I'll have a king stud and then I'll have my uh, trimmer studs under this garage header. So I have a little bit of leeway there. Two six penny duplex nails, attach these nice and stiff. Now remember for the sake of this video, here's our pour line. So that's top of concrete. Literally, all you do, slide this in, drive the wedge. So that's it. I'm gonna do both straps, then I'm gonna adjust so that the pour line is right on the money. I'm gonna make sure that they match and that they're plumb. And again, just to make this simple, drawing with the pencil just to make that a little easier to see. Okay, so that's it. This <laughs> is like literally that's it. Now from this side, turns out I got that one right on the money. I'm gonna shift it down and I'm gonna tap here. Don't do too hard or you'll break them. I know, because we have a bunch of broken ones, including this one, but it will do its job. Now on this side, you can tell I'm way too high. Well, that's easy, I just slide it down. Again, I'm gonna tap that. So there's my pour line and there's my pour line. So that's right on the money. Now I like to check these because yeah, so I'm within an eighth of an inch. If one of them's way taller than the other, it's going to signal everybody that one of them, potentially even both of them were installed incorrectly. I like to check them for plumb. So that guy needs to go to my left a little bit. And that guy's basically right on the money. So just put a little bit of pressure opposite. 
Now, obviously we're gonna check this again right before the pour. If your forms are level, these things are basically gonna be right on the money. But double check, over the years when they're not plumb and they get nailed to the wall, then everybody, especially next to an opening. So the opening is gonna be plumb. If this strap goes into the opening, we've got a problem. If it goes this way, it just makes us look like fools. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take, again, our like 10 or 15 year old anchor mates. These are for the anchor bolts. It's gonna space me so that I'm centered in a two by six wall. Same thing, two six penny nails. When shear walls get this small and you have hardware, it's worth taking the time to locate this stuff. It'll make your job a lot easier down the road. Since we're the framers, we're always thinking of what is our framing going to be here? We want things to be out of the way. So same thing. I'm gonna shove them in there. Then I'm gonna make sure that, because I have a three by sill, I'm gonna make sure that I have enough uh, threading. So above, I'm gonna need two and a half inches plus a quarter for the bearing plate, which would be two and three quarters. So I need at least three and a quarter with the nut. So I can come down a little bit. Same thing, I'm gonna rotate the J in the J bolt toward the steel. And I'm gonna make sure that they're about the same height. In this case, my square has a level. <laughs> That's right on the money. <laughs> okay, it, it normally doesn't do it that great. That's it. Now, if you weren't talking to the camera, you can see how quickly these things install. Now, when the inspector comes and sees that they're nice, you're more likely to pass. We're gonna check this all right before we pour. As we place concrete, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold the straps in slightly so that that little tab is against the wall. Then we're going to vibrate the concrete. We want the concrete to consolidate through those holes in the strap and on that hook, and then we are ready for an earthquake. You might have noticed when I was tapping in those six penny duplex nails that it's a little harder to strip them. Not a big deal, we just use our nail pullers. They strip super easy, right? It's two six penny duplex nails. Tap them right off of there. Now, when I open up the wall, notice that there is zero spalling. That means no repair work. Yeah, it means we did our job well. Don't bend the straps, let the concrete cure. And that's it. Easy, inexpensive, there's no spalling of the straps. That's how you install the SDHD hold down straps. This is what the wall looks like now that it's framed. Opposite my six by six trimmer studs, or my columns to hold my glue lamb header, are the hold down straps. You can see at the bottom why it's so important that we lay this all out. There's just not that much room for our anchor bolts and our three by three bearing plates. Now, in this case, I have six by sixes, but over here in this case, I have double two by six. And then of course my anchor bolts and bearing plates. This is the beauty of the strap mate. Doesn't matter if I have a six by six or a four by six, because the strap mate has this little center notch, all I need to know is what my framing is and I can just center it. This can help us to lay out whether we're the framer like myself or you're the foundation guy. If you have a double two by six column, then you just lay out to the center plus your edge distance if that applies. Same thing if it's a six by six. Here's a look at the little tabs that help us to align that with the form. And then of course, just a little wedge. As you can see, these guys are pretty aged, still have concrete on them. Well worth the money.